Hello, I'm Sam Olson from River Bluff Studios. Today we are looking at something a little bit different. Uh, my mom brought down uh, about a week ago uh, two phone books, and it wasn't until last night that I actually took a look at them. And I'm very glad because uh, they're very interesting. I love anything that has to do with Elgin and really history in general. It's really fascinating. And uh, the first one we have here is um, this is what it looks like. Uh, we'll get a, a different shot of it. It's got pretty much advertisements on the front on the back and on the spine, and it is called Evans Elgin City Directory 1927 to 1928. Now uh, this is, uh, this was bought at a flea market a long time ago, um, probably after I was born, but still a long time ago, uh, for $27. Um, so it's pretty interesting that something like this can go for about $30. Uh, it's pretty good condition. Uh, the spine's a little worn out and the book kind of moves around a lot, but besides that, it's actually in fantastic shape, especially um, the uh, pages, too. Uh, and then on the first page here, we have copyright 1927 by W.W. W. Evans, and uh, the introduction, and I'll read a little bit of that. In presenting to the Elgin public my fourth edition of the Elgin City Directory, I wish to acknowledge the gratitude, my appreciation of the patronage accorded my efforts by the businesses and professional citizens of Elgin. While Elgin has hitherto never boasted of anything but a healthy, steady growth, it is evident that the last two years has been noted for a wonderful expansion of its business interests generally and a large addition to its population, necessitating the building of numerous homes. Several hundred have been several hundred having been erected since the last edition of the city directory two years ago and the building boom still continues um official figures official figures furnished by the city hall authorities show that from september 1st 1925 to september 1st 1926 there were 556 homes built 206 having been erected the present year 1927 at an expense of over a million dollars. From 1923 to 1926, a total of $4,665,533 has been expanded in the erection of new houses alone, with number, which number 1,071. These figures are official, having been furnished by the city authorities for this work. Uh, and it goes on um, for another page and a half. But uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty uh, amazing here. Uh, just looking at it, the old pages. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see with the light, um, so uh, my apologies for that. But it's it's actually quite interesting. It's it's pretty thick. Uh, I don't know if you can see that quite well, but it is it is quite thick, and um, it it gives credit to all the different people that helped out, um, and then uh, it starts. Um, so it has the commissioners, the city of officers, water division, fire department, police department, board of examining engineers, board of examining plumbers, fire and police commissioners, and um, and then over here it goes to um, how to sound an alarm. Notice keys are in the firebox under glass front, break glass, turnkey, open door, pull hook down once and let go. Stand by the box until the firemen arrive and direct them to the fire. A lot of steps just to send off a fire alarm. I mean, first you gotta break the glass, you have to get the key from underneath the glass, you have to turn the key, then you have to open the door, and then you have to pull the hook down once and let go. Nowadays you just pull down a, 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 a lever and the fire alarm goes off. It seems like a lot of work. And then, how to send alarm by phone, you call fire 46, give street and number with nearest cross streets, speak distinct distinctively, not uh, excitedly remain at phone until sure the department has the message correct um, that ask your precautions to avoid a fire fire alarm boxes um, wow there are a lot of fire boxes we have um, well <laughs> they don't go in order unfortunately but over 500 fire boxes in Elgin that was quite amazing actually Um, then we have the post office, east side of North Spring Street between Milwaukee and Division Streets. Uh, office hours from 6.45 a.m. to 6 p.m. Legal holidays open from 8 to 10 a.m. All mails closed at 9 p.m. 
money order, postal savings from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. General delivery windows open from 6.25 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then there's the post office staff, um, the Elgin Postmasters, the closing and departure of mails, um, air mail, Sunday only, charitable institutions, the public library, Elgin Township Government, Public Parks, Societies of Elgin, Clubs, um, Patriotic Society, Fraternal and Benevolent. I mean, there are a lot inside of here. Miscellaneous Societies, li literary, lit literary Societies, Trade Organizations, Churches. I mean, there are public school directory. Let me see if I can find my school in here. Uh, yeah, McKinley School. That's where I went to school. Um, Gillian Will, Will Learning Principal, 851 Prospect. Wow. <laughs> it gives all the teachers. That's, that's quite amazing. It also has um, Columbia School, High School, no name, but it just says high school. Columbia School, Franklin School, Garfield School, Grand School, Lincoln School, Sheridan School, McKinley School, A.H. Uh, Lowry, 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 I can't say that school, and J.P. Lord School, and Washington School. Jolene School and the Unassigned School, which I think is kind of interesting how it says unassigned. Um, then we have additions, changes, removals, etc. Um, too late for class classification. Um, and then on the, each top of the page here, I'll show you, uh, they give like uh, an ad up here at the top uh, on each page and then all the names and stuff like that below. And I think that's quite interesting. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm blown away by this. It's really quite interesting and cool to even try and find people from so long ago. And the different places too. I mean, I, I mean, all the different advertisements at the top and the bottom of each page is, is really quite interesting, too. I mean, if there was someone in Elgin you know, that you wanted to find from, uh, what was it, 1927 to 1928, you're probably in this book. And uh, I, th I think that's really, really cool. And then one that's a little bit older, but yet, I'm sorry, one that's a little bit newer, but yet still really, really old, and it looks older than that one. Um, this is the Elgin Telephone Directory. May of 1940 from the Illinois Bell Telephone Company. Um, that also has advertisements on the front, back, and unfortunately you can't get anything on the spine, but it does say uh, Elgin, Illinois, there on the spine, which I think is pretty cool. Um, now there is a name here, I can't tell what it is though, it was a long time it was written, but we'll definitely show you that. Thing, so that up here, the name. So yeah, that's pretty cool. This did belong to someone. This was like their personal kind of book. Uh, it's got regulations, information about telephone service, information about out of town calls, and here's the page I thought was extremely cool. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly show it to the camera here, but I'll get a, another shot. It's it's called the Save Time page. Enter here the numbers you call frequently. Uh, it's got the cleaner, the dentist, the druggist, the garage, grocer, laundry, meat market, physician, and it's got one filled in for every single thing. One of them has an area code uh, for the physician is 3303-2553. It's really interesting to see the numbers, uh, telephone numbers, and how they've changed over the years as well. Um, I mean, that's, that's really cool. I wonder if we can actually track down any of these type of people in these locations. Um, and then we go straight to the telephone directory. Um, starting with the AAA Chicago Motor Club, um, which I think is pretty cool here as well. Um, Ackman Bros Department Store, you know, all the, all the places, you know, that, uh, and there's some that are in bold and some that aren't, but this one is much more... Um, I wouldn't say organized, but uh, more there's more on the page compared to the other book. And uh, I mean that one was more of a city directory. This is more of just a telephone book, but it's still really interesting. And this these pages are really really old, like 
just touching them, it feels like they're going to fall apart. Um, and again, these go on forever and ever, but there's also a page in here, or uh, an area called the Classifieds. Um, it's got this cool little thing in here, which is actually connected to the spawn. It's here, and it's classified though, and it looks pretty cool as well. Classified telephone directory of Elgin, May of 1940. How do you use the classified directory? Um, and these says like more of all the advertisements that were in that book, uh, up at the top and the bottom, but now they're in the separate pages for the classifieds, kind of like you see in the newspapers now. Um, as my parents picked these up a long time ago at an Elgin flea market, uh, I don't know if it was uh, high school or if it was uh, the, you know, the farmer's market, flea market kind of thing, I, I really don't know, but uh, definitely really two interesting pieces um, that I enjoyed looking through last night and again today. Um, and although there's no really way for you to take a look at these, if you want to know some information through from them, uh, if you're looking up from a name from either 1927-1928 or May of 1940 from Elgin, uh, by all means let me know and I'll, I'll try and find it in there for you, try and find their phone number, their address, or um, you know anything else I can find on them that the information might be given, as well as uh, uh, businesses as well. Maybe you owned a business at that time, well maybe not you, but someone you knew owned a business back then and want to see if it's in there, I'd be more than happy to take a look for you. Um, but besides that, I, uh, I want to thank you for watching and uh, I want to go to the Gale Road Public Library soon and kind of go through their historic uh, reference section and take a look at more books uh, on the different uh, homes in uh, Elgin as well as historic places and kind of break those down, go into a room and just look at every single thing they have there. Um, and yeah, we can look through those. I mean, they're really interesting. I go there every now and then just to take a look at them and I'm fascinated by it. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy. This has been Elgin Foam Books Part 1. Maybe there'll be a Part 2 in the future. Oh, and time will tell. But thank you for watching. I am Sam Wilson with River Bluff Studios, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.